anyways, I'm going to do a really quick tag video. I was actually tagged by Linda from a jo the channel Josephine's Daughter. I think I actually started to get to know Linda on Instagram, I believe. That's when I think I first started to engage with her. Anyway, she does have a YouTube channel and she tagged me in this tag that I told her I would do. And it was kind of like interesting to me because she had said something about the fact that, you know, I've been on YouTube so long that I probably, you know, everyone probably knows everything or something of that nature. And, and she's probably right in a way because it was hard for me to think about something that maybe nobody knew. So anyways, the tag is three things you don't know about me. And I'm going to, of course, link Linda's channel, Josephine's Daughter, so you can check hers out. I don't know who initiated the tag, whether it was Linda or not. I think it was. So anyways, the three things you don't know about me, and you probably don't even care. So um, the question number one, or, or the, the first thing that comes to mind is my first job. When I was 14 years old, I lied and told my employer that I was older. So I actually started working at 14 and then I turned 15. And so I worked over a year before I was legally able to work at 16. And my first job that I had, I actually had two jobs, almost actually three top jobs, almost at the same time because I was really motivated to make money. So, but the, the first job was, I was actually one of those A&W root beer car hops. Now, if you, if you, you know, older like me, you might remember A&W root beer, you might remember the car hops. Well, I didn't wear the roller skates, but we did wear the white boots, the mini skirt. I had the apron, the little change thing on my hip and the little hat and all that. So that was my, my very first job. I worked there for a long time. I actually became the head car hop. <laughs> Can you believe that? So yeah, head car hop. So I was actually responsible back then um, in the avenue of training all the other car hops. So I went from my main root beer stand to another one in another town and I I was the training director for the car hops. <laughs> kind of interesting, huh? Considering that I'm the training director for my real estate firm today. But anyway, so at a very young age, that's what I did. I also worked at Market Basket as a cashier. And I loved working in, in my, it was actually Demoulas back then, because on Sundays they gave you time and a half. So I volunteered for every Sunday that I possibly could because time and a half. That was a great pay. So my first job, volunteer, you know, my first job was a car hop and a cashier and then I worked for W.C. Grants as a bill collector and I did that in the summer all that first year. Nobody knew how old I really was. I guess I looked older all the time. And my second thing that I'll talk about that nobody probably is aware of is that in my town, Many years ago, I was a volunteer firefighter. I joined the volunteer fire department in my local town, and I went through some intense training. I was a volunteer firefighter. I was one of three females at that time on the fire department. One joined at the same time as me, and one was the chief's wife. So there were three of us female firefighters. Someday I'll talk about all the stories that I have, I could write a book. But anyway, so yeah, I was a volunteer female firefighter in my town and then I also became an EMT. And I, you know, was a first responder for a long time. I've always been interested in people that, you know, like that go out of their comfort zone to help other people, I guess. I don't know if that's the right way to, to word it. But I remember as a young girl living in where we grew up, there was a real sharp corner and all the time, many times I should say there were accidents, and many times my father was the first one on the scene, and he, he was not a firefighter, he was not an EMT, he was just a person that lived there around the corner, and he'd be the first one on the scene, and there were times that I was trailing right behind him. Why, I don't know, I couldn't do anything, I was just a little girl, but, um, but I've always been, you know, that's always, 
held a special place in my heart for those people that put themselves out there to help other people in a time of ex extreme crisis when you're having an accident. And some of the accidents that I went to that I responded as an adult EMT and that I went to when my dad responded, not being a professional, some of them were pretty bad. And I have a lot of horrible memories about that. that some of those things. It's always made me extra cautious as an adult. It's always made me worry about my own children and about safety. And it's also made me extremely compassionate. I hate to see people in pain, you know, no matter what. I just, I hate to see people in pain. So yeah, that was one of the things. And, I, and maybe the third thing, um, and it really, I, I tossed around a lot about this, but the third thing for me is that I became president of the New Hampshire Association of Realtors. Now the New Hampshire Association of Realtors is a state association and I know many of you probably don't know how the realtor organization works, but each state has a state association and then they have a few local associations depending on the towns. And then there's a national association. Anyways. I became, I was very reluctant um, to become president. I didn't really ever achieve a uh, dream of that. I never wanted to achieve that. It was never a goal. I watched my husband, Jay, become president. I watched as he went up through the ranks of leadership and, and some of the, 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 the things that he had to tackle as a state leader. And I knew that it was in many ways a very thankless job, you know, that you were on the front lines and that, you know, if your members didn't like the dues, if your members didn't like what the National Association was doing or what was happening, you were that person they went after. So after I saw Jay become president and I saw some of the things that he went through in his term, I, I was like doubly sure I would never do that. And then what happened years later? I just kept getting asked, you know, oh, you, you know, would you consider running? You're being natural. And so I finally, I gave in. And I remember agonizing because you had to be voted. You know, you ran, you had to vote. So I remember agonizing over a speech. And I wrote my speech and I practiced my speech and, and I felt really passionate by what I was gonna say, but I was scared to death. I'm extremely shy and I was scared to death. And I'll never forget that day. I went up before the entire board of directors of the entire state association, and I had to ask for their vote. It, and there was someone else running too. So I got up to the podium, I had my speech with me, and I looked at everyone in the room, and I, I have no idea what happened. But I never once looked down at my speech, I just started to speak to them. And I don't know exactly what I said. I, I wish it was recorded, but my husband was in the back of the room and he had heard me practice and practice my speech. And he knew that it was not at all reading my speech. So some of it I'm sure was, you know, memory from having written it and practiced it, but a lot of it was pure emotion that day. And the words that came out of me were not planned. And uh, from that day on, every speech I've had to give, every, type of event like that. Yes, I had my talking point. I, I knew what I had to say, what I had to get across, but I could not, a, I'm not a speech reader. I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not a scripted person. So uh, my term when I was state president, I actually had a pretty decent uh, term because by the time I became president, a lot of the major issues and hurdles that the presidents before me was over and I my main thing was to sort of pave the way because there was 2010 there was something called the internet there was a new way people were buying real estate then there was a fear that the real estate agents would you know go like the way of travel agents you know be disintermediated or whatever the word is and so there was this huge fear on that and um, so I kind of paved the way in the sense of my terms in the sense of and my platform was actually Rather than SEO, search engine optimization, I was focusing on agents, YEO, which meant for you engaging others. And I didn't coin that phrase. It was a guy, Jeff Turner, that had coined it originally. And he was sort of my role model in that. And so that became my platform and paving the way for realtors to find their way onto social media or into the internet and all that stuff. And so I actually had a good couple of years. So those are the three things that you 
probably didn't know about me. <laughs> he probably didn't care to know. But anyways, so yeah, check out Linda's channel and, um, and watch her video. And if any of you want to do this tag, go right ahead. I'm not going to tag anyone because I know that, you know, some of you probably, um, well, I know that some people don't like being tagged, but it doesn't bother me to be tagged. In fact, I'm flattered when people tag me. So anyways, if you're interested in doing this, go right ahead and um, check out Linda and do the tag. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Those three things that I may not know about you. So thanks so much, guys. I will talk to you all later. Bye.